So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a job in a day. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Anthony Parry and I'm a third generation plasterer from North Wales. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a job in a day. So this is a job that I really needed to get finished. I didn't have much time, so I wanted to get this job done and dusted in one day. So there was a few things that could stop me from doing this, but let's see how I got on. Right guys, today's job is a conservatory. Now this is a private one, I normally do one um for a company but this is through youtube channel i've got this job so that's that's really cool that i've actually started to get in a bit of work through youtube as well this job is just a basic conservatory uh, the roof's already been done uh, but they didn't have the walls done at the time so they've decided to have the walls done so um, that's what i'm gonna do now um i've got to do a bit of electrics first which uh, it's okay because i am just basically Put in thicker boxes on so i'm just basically copying and pasting if you ask me <laughs> um that's the only sort of uh, electrics i do is copy and paste so i've just got to go and get some extra sockets because um, something has changed they've decided they want to put a heater on the wall they want to put um, an extra socket and a fuse switch for the heater so what i've got to do is um, i'm going to put a conduit in um keep the socket where it is they're gonna blank that off later get an electrician to put in the fuse so I don't have to worry about that but because I want to be able to finish it today um, I need to go and get some extra boxes so I'm just on my way to screw fix now to pick some more stuff up right let's go show you what this job is like conduit to there and I've got to check two boxes there because he's having a radiator that's going to get blanked um, I need to get some boxes and bring them out I need to sort all this out uh, I've just taken the conduit out uh, I'm going to run this back to here run the cable down put a new box in run the cable down there a box in there and then um, I can just dry line everything and get it all skin now Right guys, the most important part of any job is the preparation. So I'm just putting some plastic sheeting down. Now this is just to protect the flooring and also to save me some cleaning up as well. So now you can see that I'm starting to get ready for doing all my electrics. So always make sure that everything's level. You can see my level there. And what I'm doing is I'm just drilling the back boxes on now. Now I know this is in the place where they wanted them to go. So basically I've got those in place there. These boxes, down here I have put thicker boxes in instead now this area was the bit that was going to take a lot of time so I've had to put connectors on all the wires once taking all the sockets off and I'm basically just making sure that everything is running nicely in line so if you can see with this socket here again all the cables in a, going down in a line instead of down the side of the conservatory now one of the tips that I always say is I always take photographs or videos of all of the sockets and this is to make sure that all the cables go back in the exact same place because as I said I'm not an electrician but I can do the very basics. Also uh, this is going to get sorted by an electrician at a later date so he can check everything out as well. Right guys all of the electrics are now done. Um, I'm now at the stage now where I need to bought this pretty darn quickly. So, uh, what time is it now? So it's now quarter past 11, right? So I need to board this, get this dry lined quick sharp now. If I can get this done by, if I can get this done in an hour or so, that'd be pretty good going. And then I can um, give it a couple of, give it an hour or so for it to dry and get straight on it uh, right let's do this guys 
Now guys, you know I'm up against the clock now, so I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible when I'm cutting all of these boards. Now with experience, because I've cut, I've cut an awful lot of conservatories, I can speed this up just by knowing how to get angles quite quickly and also how to get marks on the boards just to make it go a little bit more smoothly. Now, what you'll see me doing in a minute, I've got this big piece at the top. Now, you, what you need to do is you need to get a nice level across and you want to make sure that you've got somewhere that the boards can hang on. Now, I'm just cutting down the sides there so there is a bit of a lip so that when I cut this next board, I'm going to be leaning it on top of them. Now, if you just saw then, was I was using my level to make sure that I would get the points in the right direction. And as you can see, it will just sit on top of the plasterboard there. Now the next part that I'm doing is I'm making sure that I am, I've got to cut some boards to go in between the plasterboard and the frames. Now these need to be the same all the way through and this is also a great way of making sure that you're keeping your margins the same all the way through. So I'm just now cutting all the boards as I said, mark the boards with some either you can wet it with some water or you can just use the back of the plasterboard and put some chalk on it and you'll get some marks and I use my multi-tool to make this a lot quicker and smoother. So now that the last of the cutting is done it's time to get ready for some doing some drywall. Now I'm really lucky there is water right outside this door so I can just go and get all of my mixing stuff together and uh, I can just leave the water running as I'm going along. Now I've taken the boards off here ready. You probably can't see but I have marked where the plasterboard ends so that I always know where I can put the extra dabs. Now it's always important to make sure when you're dabbing is that you get a lot of dabs around the edges. Right, as you can see, I try to treat drywalling like I'm doing stud work. So I make sure all of my edges have a lot of dab on and I make sure that I've got some in the middle as well. And I'm just trying to make sure that there is enough strength there as possible. Now, as I am dry lining, I tend to scrim as I'm going and this is just to take a process out of it so I don't have to be scrimming later on. But as you can see, I do make sure that I put plenty of drywall on. And this is just to make sure that I don't have any problems and I know that everything is nice and solid. The worst thing you can have is floppy plasterboards because you know that they will crack. <sighs> right, I'm almost ready for chicken skin. Well, I am ready for chicken skin on that. So that's going on. Um, yeah, it's been tougher than I wanted it to be. The dry wall I had it in my locker and uh, it's gone off like a rocket, so I've had to do it in like three separate hits instead of like doing one, one day. So that's the mess things up a bit, but it's all on now. It's all going off quite nicely, so I'm now going to shut the skim on. I think it's time half two. So let's see how quickly I can get all this on trialled up. Wow, that was a bit grumpy, wasn't it? Yeah, I had a bit of problem with my drywall adhesive. Basically, it just started going off like a rocket. So I was a bit tired and a bit a bit grumpy then, but hey-ho, it happens, especially working on your own. You've got, you just need to G yourself up and get going. Right, so I'm just gonna chuck my first coat on now, make sure I'm putting it on as neat as possible. I'm just using a speed skim to make sure that it's lovely and flat. Now, after I do use my speed skim, I do give it a trial because I think it's really important to have a really clean first coat. Now, this means that everything's going to be pulling in at nice rates and it also, I always think it leaves a better finish than if you have a really nice first coat. Right, so I'm making sure I'm cleaning all of my edges right now because you might as well if you've got a bit of time. Also, I'm trying to speed this up. I'm actually using the same plaster and I've just put a bit more water in just to bring it back to life a bit. So ready for my second coat. Now, it's very important that you try and get your skin in as clean as possible. I always say, treat your second coat as if it's a trowel. Right, so 
it's all done I'm now trying to make sure that all of my edges are pretty good now around these windows because these are old frames I'm using um, a plastic trowel and this really does help get any skim off and it also keeps keeps the margins really well because that is one of the key things for when you're plastering any sorts of conservatories is that you want to make sure that all your margins are looking good and these little plastic trowels that you get from Amazon are perfect for that you can cut them to any size you want they come in loads of sizes as well and they are just a great little tip if you are um, doing any sort of plastering and they do get you out of jail quite a lot right anyway I'm just giving it its first wet trowel Now, for any of you eagle-eyed plasterers out there, yes, I'm using a plastic trowel now. Now, this is the Ox plastic trowel. Now, this is a lot stiffer than my refiner trowel, and basically, what I'm using it for right now is I'm trying to speed the process up. Now, you know that I am up against the clock today, and I'm also against the light. So, the reason why I'm using a plastic trowel is because what happens when you're using a steel trowel is you bring the moisture to the surface and with a plastic trowel you tend to compress the plaster so I'm just using it as a bit of a cheat code to make this go off a little bit quicker now I know that I've got lovely flat walls so I know that and I know that this trowel is fairly stiff so it's actually not going to be affecting um, the plaster too much it's just me trying to speed the process up a little bit now I'm sure there will be a lot of people disagree with this but I do go back to using my master trowel after this it's just a case of me just trying to speed it up just to make my life a bit quicker Now I am doing what every electrician loves and I am cleaning out all of the boxes. But as I am the electrician today, I'm doing it for my own benefit. Now I always recommend cleaning out the sockets as you're going along. Now one of the main reasons why is because if somebody comes to clean your sockets after you finish plastering, what's the chance that they're gonna take as much care as you do? Right. Just a quick hard trial now guys just to make sure give it one last polish and then i'm going to start chucking on all of the sockets All the electric is done, extra sockets, extra one down there, toy day. Right, so we've now come to the end of this job and it went really well in the end. I'm really happy with how it went. I wasn't too late and uh, even though I had a few setbacks in the beginning where I had to go off and go and find some sockets and uh, do the actual electrics as well, it went really smoothly. So yeah, um, I was really happy with this. The customer was happy and ultimately I'm happy if the customer's happy. So if you did like this video, please give me a like. And if you would like more videos like this, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I'm also on other social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and I've just launched uh, my brand new website, which uh, it's taken me a while to get one sorted. Um, so it's finally there. So I finished that last week. So um, link to my website's here. If you are interested in having any plastering done and you're in the North Wales area and to extent some parts of Cheshire as well, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, I'm now doing a service where if you can send me your measurements and also some photographs, I will give you a rough quote and then if that is something that you're interested in, we can take it further and I can come to the job and give you a full quote. Anyway, enough with the uh, business side of things. I just want to say thank you if you've got to this end of the video. Thank you for watching my videos. 
think about like and subscribing. Um, I also have um, something called Buy Me A Coffee. Now, this is just to help the channel out, just to make sure that some of my time gets paid for and also that um, I can invest it in some new gear as well. But um, I hate doing this part, but it's something you've got to do if I want to be making better videos and which is what I want to be doing. I want to make better content so that you understand what's going on in Plastron and hopefully um, I can give you some value back as well. Right, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like these videos, like and subscribe. But I've been Anthony Parry, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.